Armageddon is actually something that is very possible today. There's a lot of reasons for that. Not only are we facing a lot of problems in America with liars, cheaters, and thieves who steal American rights every single day. And those people live in our societies and they work in a variety of professions. They all have a career life and everyone in America knows that our job as American citizens, literally as individuals who live here, is to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. But life, liberty, and happiness has some boundaries. And those personal space boundaries, those professional boundaries, those personal brand boundaries are literally ours individually. But there's always a liar, a thief, and a cheat who will invade a person's boundaries because they have failed to recognize who they are in the world. They don't look in the mirror and go, I'm a liar, I'm a thief, and I'm a cheat. They look in the mirror and go, I am so smart, I am so cool, I am so badass, and nobody knows, and everybody's a fool. Now, what we have to look at is our life in the simplest of form. What happens? We are born, we are raised, and we work. And eventually we retire, and we go back to Mother Earth, or some of us go off to heaven in the light of the Lord. Now, I only say that because that is the prescription that is noted in almost every description of a holy father and mother across the world. Regardless of the state, regardless of the prefecture, regardless of the nation, regardless of the tribe, these are the stories that are told to us and passed down over the history of time. But when we look at our daily life, it's pretty straightforward. We get up, we eat something, we take a crap at some point, we literally go off to our jobs, our employment, our business life, and we try to thrive. We work our way through the concepts of survival, security, and significance, and those are the stages of literally of financial affluence and social influence. You see, you can't get anywhere in life if you don't have a network, but sometimes you have to look at your network and go, are these people getting me where I really want to go? Are they just making me feel powerful because I can get them to do whatever the hell I want them to, but I'm still living in survival. I still don't have a home, I still don't have a car, or I'm not showing people that I do because I'm a liar. And you see the difference? In America, we have choices unlike other third world nations and other dictatorships and other socialist places. We have choices to become all we can be. But becoming all we can be is never taking away from somebody like me or somebody like you. What we know in the world is that there are people who are helpers, there are people who are servants, and there are people who show it, shine the light of the Lord on other people. And if your light is one of this ugliness where you're eavesdropping, where you're stealing, where you're taking people's underwear, where you're taking their technology cords, where you're interfering with their rights to be online, where you're editing their videos and they're not yours, and you're creating identity theft, you're doing fraud, you're actually committing cybercrime, and you haven't faced yourself yet, I highly encourage you to look at what's going on in your life. You are completely and 100% lying to yourself about what you are in life. Now, there's a lot of different predilections in the world. And a predilection is just a politically correct, socially polite way to say different sexualities. We absolutely know that things go crazy when we get into the wrong part of our life, but here's what happens. A person's intimate partner is nobody's business but them and the Lord. A person's sexual preferences, their sexual practices, and all that does not belong in public society. We are tolerant of people who hold hands. We are tolerant of people who kiss each other. We are tolerant of people who hug each other. And nowadays, there are tons of bromances and sistermances or whatever the hell they call them amongst friends who just hug each other because it's what we do. The human touch is something that people long for. Love is something that God expects us to find. But if you have found the wrong love, I can guarantee you that the rest of the world can see it on you. And they see it on you by the way that you treat other people, the way that you arrogantly carry yourself, and the way that you might be still living in the streets. Which means that you don't love your life enough to change your life, and you don't have a partner that's loving enough to help you try to get yourself out of that strife of life. But you've settled in life. Now, America is a marvelous country, and not everyone can be a 100% millionaire, billionaire success like our past president. And I'd still like to see at some point the list of the things that he did really well. 
and I really love to see a list of the things that he wished he could have gone, gotten to do better. But it's just a job, motherfucker. Being a president, being a vice president, being a manager, being a supervisor, being an employee are all jobs to you and me. Being a business entrepreneur is still a job, motherfucker. And if you don't know how to do your business to the point that you can't get off a street corner, then that's probably on you. But it could also be on other people around you, total strangers that have no fucking rights to your life, that are interfering with every fucking aspect of your legal life. It could be a latent sibling that is so fucking jealous that they want to destroy your life so that they can get more inheritance, they can get more love time for your mother and father, or who knows what the fuck they're thinking. But the reality is in life you only have one life to live, and you're making choices every single day about how you live. But what if you chose a different way to live that day? What if you just said, "Is I'm not going out to play this way today. I'm going to go to a library and learn something for me today. I'm going to find a way to get myself in with some federal help to an educational program for me. And I'm not going to worry about what my spouse thinks. I'm not going to worry about what my children thinks. I'm going to just worry for the moment about me. What would happen to your life? If, would it possibly skyrocket because God is then going to bless your life? I can't say for you. I just know for me. That when I get up for my morning day, I'm literally checking first and foremost at this present time, what did they take today? Did they steal something today? Do I still have my beard on my face today? I certainly don't have hair on my body because some sexually inappropriate per pervert thought that they would drug my food, take me away from my life for a week, and literally shave almost all the hair on my body. And then some other sexually deviant people want to check that on me who are strangers listening to my podcast and I can't even fucking know how they got onto my intellectual property cast. But the truth is in life, you have to look at your life. How would you feel if that was you? How would you feel if you woke up after being in jail and somebody had shaved your pubic hair? How would you feel if you woke up in jail and found that somebody had tied your beautiful beard that you grew, you grew for your love of God in a knot? How would you feel if someone took all the hair off your marvelous body that you worked your whole life to feel good about and they destroyed your body image? How would you feel if someone had cut the fingertips off of your fingers to try to begin to sexually traffic you into their little Muslim community or their Mexican community or their black community to make you a slave to them? How would you feel? You see, America has come a long way, baby, and we don't do slavery here anymore. But there's always some liar about America. And their lie is, I get to be here and stay here and play here and lay here, and I'm not actually lawfully a citizen. You lie to yourself, motherfucker, and American citizens hate you for that. You're also monkeying with your, our food. You're destroying our cellular health. You're playing in a mood that's not your right. But then we have lawful citizens here that sexual tra sexually human traffic people that have made a whole person's life about their sex life or their body image or their actual genitalia. We have mutilations going on all across America, and the mutilations is usually a stranger, total stranger, or a group of mob of strangers who are totally inappropriately sexually assaulting someone's life. How motherfucking ill is God looking at you, looking down from heaven? So you'll have to look at your life because everybody eventually goes to the heavenly gates or everybody eventually goes to hell. Or maybe you're just an atheist and you believe you go right into the earth and ashes to ashes and dust to dust like we used to say over a person who's died. But the bottom line I can absolutely tell you is that you're not caring about your life. The minute you crossed the line and stole something from me or anyone else in the, in the concept of poverty was the minute you gave up your life to Satan. And here's the thing, you don't even believe in Satan. You don't even think he exists. No, the satanic force, the dark world belongs and only exists through people. Demons cannot enter this world. It is something that God banished a long time ago. But demon spirits can work their way into your mind, make you feel depressed all the time, make you become an alcoholic in some ways, and literally take a hold of your life and destroy it. But as far as me goes, people decided to socially, professionally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically and sexually and genitally, if that's a word, attack my life. And I'm bold enough as a man to talk about it. But some motherfucking black woman is running around the community with information that doesn't belong to her. And some bastard police officer is participating in the nanny nanny boo boo uh, rock and roll trip of I'm going to have a looky loo on you and then I'm going to fuck your life in records. 
because some motherfucking bastard of a retail employee who's making less than the poverty line practically decides to call police on the fact that someone is not soliciting outside their store. They're actually working outside their store. All the while they're discriminating because they're allowing people to panhandle outside their store. Now, in this community, there is no laws that protect you from people pro propping up a little business that most of the world calls panhandling, which is the soliciting of funds to help their life. Any human being has the right to solicit to help their life, except in affluent communities and affluent apartment communities that are so fucking dumb about life that they put up no soliciting signs. Now, why is that? Three reasons. One, we've had murderers go in and try to kill people. So we don't want that. We have thieves going to try to steal from people, and we don't want that. And third, we have people really in poverty who really need help, not get help and get harmed by the people in the apartment complexes. So we've just decided apparently America is not mature enough to handle this, so we're just going to say no soliciting across the board in those communities. And that's okay. They have the right to do that. People have the right to go home and not be solicited when they want to go home, decompress, and relax. But what I'm talking about today is where is your life going? Because at some point you're going to be old and grave. Are you going to still be sitting on that corner every day looking for a handout? Or you're actually going to get less and less because your reputation is out there. It's in a newspaper. It's, it's everywhere. And your behavior precedes you. I'm literally talking on the phone with a lawyer, literally very upset about what's going on in my life, trying to get some help, soliciting help from someone that I can barely pay at this time in life. And some fucking bitch from a panhandler and a solicitor is walking by me, listening, eavesdropping, and talking back at me like I'm having a conversation to her. I am most fucking not. I am not the only person who, when they get passionate and raging on the phone, that they start shouting into the phone. I've actually been in a bank going to visit one of my professional friends and heard an, an overheard a lady just shouting at the top of her lungs in a in a glass chamber because her husband was divorcing her. I tried to help that lady to say, hey, just want you to know you can be heard in this bank that is allowing you the kindness and generosity to use this room for free. But I'm not telling any stories out of hand. I'm talking about an experience that I experienced of something that I observed and openly I'm sharing it with you to make you think. How do you look in the world is basically what you're going to get back in the world. How you behave in the world is exactly what you're going to get back in the world. But you're too miserable in your life to make a choice in your life to change. But instead of being willing and, and able and mature enough to make a change in your life, to move yourself towards something and better in life, You'd rather make the change and hit other people's lives. And I just look at you and go, what are you functioning at age 12? This isn't fucking junior high. This is real life. And if I say that, then you want to bash me for speaking the truth to your life. No, I'm speaking as a pagan priest that I'm busy doing my life and I'm not out in the community looking for other people in struggle like me because you can't help me. And your network can't help me. And your network insults me. And your network patronizes me. And your network beats me up. And your network steals from me. So why would I want you anywhere near my life? What do I do like are these generous people. And gen generally speaking, it's a black, affluent, and intelligent community, provided they're not lying about what they're doing for me. And they're generous and kind to my ministry. And that generosity helps me to eat. And when I was on campus, it sort of helped other people to eat too. But even the bastard children on campus walk by poverty thinking, that'll happen, never happen to me. Really? If your father or mother died in a car accident today, where would you be in paying your bills? And what I say to every pansy ass man of, have you been married for 20 years in your life? Have you provided successfully for your family, your wife, and your children? Have you raised the child from very young ages to adulthood? Are they practically successful in society after that? Have you produced a business in the community that served a lot of people? Have you served in volunteer organizations like me? Have you practiced any form of life balance of having a faith, family, fitness, finance, fellowship, friendship, and philanthropy? And if you can't answer yes to any of those questions or most of the questions, then I'm sorry, you're just not a man or an adult to me. That's my level. That's my establishment in my human being mind of what is and isn't an adult of a maturity of an age. And what I experienced because of my education, because I've been a trainer, because I've been a teacher in community schools, because I understand people with special needs, because I've gone through that special needs education in graduate school, because I sort of get all this shit, I can have a conversation with you and see exactly where you're functioning in life. 
Because no, no, no offense, motherfucker. We've had more than sixty fucking years about how to raise a child correctly today, and you're just too fucking lazy to pick up a book to read how to not fuck your child up for the rest of American society. Now I'm pretty passionate about child rearing. It's not because I'm some mamby pamby man. It's because I see what the difference in the land. The children that are raised right to love on people, to serve people, to become educated, to do work, don't fuck America. But people who are raised to panhandle, to solicit up and down the street, to pester you at a bank, a bank machine and whatnot for money as if they are owed something, they harm America. And I don't like people who came here illegally because I had to work my ass off to bring my friends over to America lawfully. I didn't understand it all, but I had to pick up books. I had to read as much as I could. I had to do everything that I could within the lines of all the different laws that were affecting us and doing that. And openly, I had to go to a senator named Luger to get some additional help with that. I am a politician by nature because at, I was raised at a young age to stuff envelopes from my father who was a committeeman. And all my life, my father was a, a, an established statesman, a, a good orator, orator, and a marvelous storyteller. And Horace the Pet Mountain Lion was one of his best stories as a child for us. And if you don't know Horace, then you should learn a tongue-in-cheek story. It's marvelous. And at the end of the story, it was funnier than hell to a kid. And I wish I could do my father's deal. And I'm so pissed off at my fucking brother who never took a video of that when he had the equipment to do that before my father couldn't do that anymore. But openly, that's okay. I have a right to be angry. I have a right to be angry at people who solicited my life, who interfered with my life, who attacked my life, who lied on my life, who stole from my life goods that God provided to me, and all the marvelous antiques and one of the kind of, one of the kind items that police officers and other people who, who, who managed storage units stole from me. Can you fucking believe it, motherfucker, that these people are so dumb in their education level that they didn't understand I stood that? I understood what they did? They started talking about things in my storage unit that I never talked to them about ever or showed them. And the marvelous man who managed the fucking place was walking around in my t-shirts and my hats, all one of a kind. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? Because people's attitudes, you can't prove that. No, God can prove that. So what I'm challenging you today, you motherfuckers, in the listening realm and apologize for the language, but God is angry. God is turning over the temples of the world. God is cleaning church houses and turning them into apartment complexes. Not at all. You are doing that because of your failure to live a godly life. And what's happening to America is that we could have Armageddon. We could have civil war again. We sort of have that. We have people that want to play both sides. In one realm, they talk like this. In another realm, they talk like that. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? If there's somebody of your kind nearby, you ignore the people of other kinds, and that's immoral. God loves color. God loves diversity. It's one of the best lines in the Robin Hood film with Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman, one of the greatest actors on the planet. But you people don't get God's love today because you don't even know how to love yourself today. So make a different choice today. Decide where your boundaries are and, and begin and not at all because you don't have the right to decide your boundaries. You have to know and establish where your personal boundaries are, where your professional boundaries are, where your sensuality boundaries are, where your sexuality boundaries are, where your intimacy boundaries are, and that's your choice. But don't try and extend an outreach outside your personal, actual, factual, intellectual boundaries of your life to reach into a stranger's life to impact their life. 